another thousand fentanyl pills. And we had to release two suspects because of Proposition 47, which is truly a soft on crime approach, which quite frankly law enforcement is frustrated. In May, we had a shootout with a man from Merced where we seized three kilos of cocaine, three kilos of fentanyl, two kilos of heroin, and 512 grams of methamphetamine. Another investigation in Exeter and Farmersville in, in March of 2022 had 17 pounds of methamphetamine. We had four kilos of cocaine and oh, close to seven pounds of fentanyl. In January of 20, we had the same story. And we can go on and on in regards to the stories that we're seeing with the illegal drugs up and down the Central Valley. We have an unsecure border. We have, in this case that I'm getting ready to talk about, a direct connection to the Sinaloa cartel fully operating right here in the Central Valley. We have a border which needs to be secure because as you see through the history of what I'm telling you in regards to dangerous drugs, dangerous people, human trafficking coming across that border is impacting public safety right here in the Central Valley and quite frankly all across our country. I say all of that to bring you to the case that we're getting ready to discuss today. Those cases are all separate and apart from each other and separate and apart from the case I'm getting ready to talk about today. But yet again, law enforcement is faced with having to deal with public safety and legislation that's not supporting law enforcement. Our public safety is in jeopardy here in the Central Valley. But I'm happy to say that we have good men and women in law enforcement fighting the good fight each and every day. In this particular case, this brings me to talk about at 7 a.m. this morning, we had 21 different teams from local and state and federal agencies which served 31 simultaneous search warrants in various homes throughout Tulare County, Kings County, and Fresno counties. These warrants were a result of a nine-month investigation that we receive in an early tip from the San Luis Obispo County Sheriff's Office, hence the name Slow Ride. That investigation from, those, from that information from the San Luis Obispo County Sheriff's Office led to this nine-month investigation. I'll explain what Haida represents. Haida is a high-intensity drug trafficking area. We have what's called TNT Haida, here in Tulare County. This morning, tactical teams, search warrant teams from a variety of different agencies all through the Central Valley, federal and state, and local agencies assisted. After the investigation and the lead from the San Luis Obispo County Sheriff's Office, the next several months included surveillance, ongoing information and investigations, of the trafficking of illegal drugs up and down the Central Valley and right here in Tulare, Kings, and Fresno counties. Drugs, guns, and cash were confiscated. Thousands of hours of man hours were, were put into this investigation. In October, the DEA began working together on a larger scale operation, which is the one you see. And up until this point, there were 389 pounds of methamphetamine, 70 grams of cocaine, 3.5 kilos of heroin, 8 pounds of fentanyl, and 340,000 in cash with 18 handguns and 12 rifles. This operation, as I'm told this morning, there's a difference between disrupting a drug trafficking operation and completely dismantling a drug trafficking operation. This investigation dismantled, completely dismantled, this drug operating cell. Now, they didn't completely get rid of cartels operating here in the Central Valley, 
But this cell was completely dismantled. That's an important key term. I truly believe because of this investigation, cities are safer, as you'll hear from supporting agencies. And the cities are safer in Visaya, Tulare, Portoville, Orosi, Dinuba, Corcoran, Armona, Reedley, and Exeter, just to name a few. As I mentioned a moment ago, this morning the teams all across the state were dismantling, but we have direct ties over our open border to the Sinaloa drug cartel. During this morning's operation, we seized 214 pounds of additional methamphetamine, 3.5 kilos of cocaine, 5 shotguns, 15 handguns, 7 rifles, and 1 bulletproof vest. So what does it look like today from the 9-month investigation to the total numbers of what we see today? You will hear from our federal counterparts. There were 22 federal arrests. There are still six outstanding who we will be looking for. With a total of 85 arrests over the course of the nine-month investigation and nearly a thousand pounds of methamphetamine seized. 6.5 kilos of cocaine and 64,000 deadly fentanyl pills with 81 guns. I have to tell you that the men and women arrested this morning have been a menace to our society. They've been operating in our neighborhoods, endangering the safety of the people who live here, endangering the safety of our children. This is a direct result of drugs freely flowing up and down the Central Valley and across our open and unsecure border. They have, again, as I mentioned, direct ties to the Sinaloa cartel, which we know are very dangerous drug operators. At first, as we conclude and come in to turning the microphone out of the other people, I want to thank the hardworking men and women of multiple agencies who helped pull this together. This morning in the early morning hours, I was here at a briefing, and there were men and women focused on making sure, one, that everyone was safe, including those who were going to be arrested. Thousands of hours, nearly 5,000 man hours were put into this investigation to bring people to justice and to take these dangerous drugs off our streets. This was a massive undertaking, and unless we had the full cooperation and collaboration and partnerships with not only our federal counterparts, our state counterparts, but our local counterparts. I can't emphasize enough the dangers that are involved with drug traffickers that endanger the safety of the lives of the people who live here in the Central Valley. But I can say that we are far safer today. We had 20 people today arrested on federal charges and 15 on state charges for a total of 35 people arrested today plus guns, drugs, methamphetamine. If you don't understand the significance of nearly a thousand pounds, that's a lot of narcotics, folks. I couldn't be any more proud to be standing up here as the sheriff of Tulare County talking about what great work the men and women did in this case. We have many people that need to speak today, so bear with us. I think their information is incredibly important. I would like to introduce our U.S. Attorney Phil Talbert from the U.S. Attorney's Office. Thanks, Chair. Uh, again, my name is Phil Talbert. I'm the United States Attorney for the Eastern District of California. I am happy to be here uh, with our uh, representatives our, of our federal, state, and local uh, law enforcement partners to announce the dismantling of this organization that was bringing large amounts of methamphetamine here into Tulare County. Over the past week, my office filed complaints uh, with federal charges against 28 defendants for methamphetamine trafficking and firearms offenses. I understand the district attorney is also filing state charges against a number of other individuals. Our complaints charge uh, the uh, defendants um, 
including the Mexican-based source of supply uh, for the drugs sent to Tulare County for distribution. The complaint charges the defendants with either conspiring to distribute or possess with intent to distribute methamphetamine and other uh, drugs uh, and or other firearms offenses. As described in the complaint affidavit, which I, I understand is unsealed, um, uh, law enforcement agents began using a confidential source in July 2023, last year, to buy methamphetamine from the organization. Agents worked hard to identify members of the organization and the phones they were using to communicate with each other about their drug trafficking and firearm trafficking activities. In September of last year, the agents worked with my office to obtain court orders authorizing the interception of telephone calls over several of the members' telephones, including the sources. The interception of their phone calls allowed the agents to identify the members of the organization and to gather evidence of their drug trafficking, including seizing loads of large quantities of methamphetamine. Prior to today's tag down, I understand that agents had already seized from the organization about 700 pounds just of methamphetamine, and that's prior to today. And you've heard the sheriff say 1,000 pounds, including today's seizures and the other drugs that are involved in, uh, in this case. Prior to today, they also seized uh, uh, multiple pounds of fentanyl, cocaine, and heroin, uh, which is consistent with uh, the cases that we've been investigating where fentanyl, methamphetamine, heroin, cocaine, all of these organizations operating in the Central Valley and being supplied by Mexico uh, are poly drug. It's not that one sells one thing and one sells another. All of these organizations are poly drug and we're seeing that in this case too. Uh, and prior to today, we had, uh, agents had also seized hundreds of thousands of dollars in currency and multiple firearms. Uh, I want to thank, uh, as the sheriff did, our many uh, federal, state, and local law enforcement partners for their hard work in this investigation. We could not dismantle an organization like this uh, with just one or two agencies. It really takes a cooperative effort at all levels of government, federal, state, and local, uh, working together, closely together, as we normally do here in the uh, Eastern District of California. I also know from my own experience uh, as a federal prosecutor, I was an assistant United States attorney before becoming a United States attorney, uh, from my own experience that wiretaps are uh, a very arduous uh, and labor-intensive method of investigation. When they work, they're great, but they take a ton of time. Agents have to spend usually all day and all night uh, monitoring uh, what's going on over the wires and then acting upon that, deciding are there investigative steps that need to be taken, is there evidence that uh, can be gathered and, uh, and identifying who's who on the phone and then following up with surveillance and other investigative steps. So I know from having supervised uh, wiretap investigations as an AUSA, how intensive that is, and I want to say a special thank you to all the agents and officers who have been working on this wiretap investigation and spending those hours away from family uh, and, and away from off time weekends and, and nights to, uh, to do that. Uh, thank you. We could not do this kind of case without that kind of uh, work and time investment. Uh, I also want to thank the prosecutor in my office uh, who has been working shoulder to shoulder uh, with those agents and officers uh, who work to obtain the uh, wiretap orders from the court, uh, who work to uh, uh, file the uh, complaint and uh, obtain the search warrants and arrest warrants that led to the operation today. That is Assistant United States Attorney uh, Tony Kataka. Uh, Mr. Kataka will be the uh, attorney in my office who continues on this case, and I want to say a special thank you to Tony for all of your hard work, too. Um, yeah. I can't emphasize enough, this case is an excellent example of what we can do in law enforcement when we work together on combating a, a, a problem. Uh, I'm proud of the work that we've done together combating the flow of methamphetamine and other dangerous drugs uh, into the Eastern District of California. Uh, I have said many times that enforcement alone is not going to solve our nation's drug crisis. Uh, but enforcement is a necessary component along with prevention, awareness, treatment, 
for us to deal with methamphetamine, fentanyl, and other drugs that our country is having such a hard time dealing with right now. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Okay, next up, I'd like to introduce DEA Special Agent in Charge, Brian Clark. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon. I'm DEA Special Agent in Charge, Brian Clark of the San Francisco Field Division. I'm pleased to be here today with our law enforcement partners. Make no mistake, the case we are detailing today is extraordinary for our area. If not for our combined resources, and our incredible federal, state, and local partnerships, we would not be able to stand before you to announce these astounding seizures and numerous arrests, all in an effort to protect you, your families, and our communities. The cartels in Mexico, primarily the Sinaloa and Jalisco cartels, are mass producing methamphetamine, and as this case details, are flooding our communities with this poison. These cartels are making methamphetamine essentially pure. We are talking nearly 97% purity and selling it to drug trafficking organizations for dirt cheap prices. According to the CDC, deaths involving psychostimulants that include methamphetamine are on the rise across the nation. The cartel business model is based upon greed. They increase their profits by driving addiction and are only successful because of distribution networks operating here in the Central Valley and beyond. This investigation began last summer with a lead from law enforcement in San Luis Obispo County to a DEA agent in Fresno. Dedicated law enforcement officers built this case from the ground up using old fashioned police work, following up on every lead, and by collaborating with our partners to expand this case to its fullest potential. Agents were able to infiltrate a well-known and long-standing drug trafficking organization operating throughout Tulare, Kings, Fresno, and San Luis Obispo counties. During the course of the investigation, law enforcement successfully purchased multiple firearms and several pounds of methamphetamine from the group. Our investigation revealed the network, led by Alfonso Ortiz and assisted by his sister, Angelica Flores, was supplied with hundreds of pounds of methamphetamine on credit from a Mexico-based source of supply identified as Alberto Alvarado, who directed the importation of the drug to this region. The intelligence we gathered provided a wealth of knowledge, which detailed the full scope of this organization. We knew who was calling the shots, the size of each drug load, who was transporting the drugs, and what their final destination was not to mention the agreed upon pricing, which was as low as $700 per pound. This investigation resulted in the seizure of nearly 1,000 pounds of methamphetamine and other drugs to include cocaine, fentanyl, heroin, along with other several firearms. Today, approximately 300 law enforcement personnel from 15 law enforcement agencies serve numerous federal arrest and search warrants in Tulare, Fresno, and Kings counties. This massive operation required an incredible amount of resources, but today I stand up here and confidently say we destroyed this deep-rooted drug distribution network. I have one final message to those who disregard the law and profit from the scourge of illicit drugs. The DEA will pursue you without hesitation. We will relentlessly attack your organization at every level to protect the safety and health of our communities. I want to thank all the agents, officers, and U.S. attorneys who worked tirelessly in this investigation. A case of this magnitude is like a puzzle, and it takes thousands of hours to put all the pieces together. More importantly, it takes strong relationships between law enforcement agencies to share intelligence, coordinate efforts, and maximize resources. These partnerships have proven to be invaluable as we work together to save lives. Thank you. Okay, at this time I'd like to introduce Central Valley HIDA Director John Martin.
Thank you, Sheriff. My name is John Martin. I am the Executive Director of the Central Valley, California High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area Program, otherwise known as HIDA. I want to acknowledge and, and thank Sheriff Boudreaux and all the law enforcement executives uh, you see behind me at the podium for their commitment to drug law enforcement. And I especially want to commend the men and women, the law enforcement professionals who conducted this complex investigation you've heard of today into the significant drug trafficking organization cell that was pumping hundreds, if not thousands of pounds of poison into our communities. The HIDA program is a, is a partnership of federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies that provide federal grant funds to areas determined to be critical drug trafficking areas in the United States. It's a unique grant program that it funds strategies developed and implemented at the local level by a coalition of federal, state, and local partners. And that's what was done here in Tulare County. The executive board of the Central Valley California HIDA, many of whom, to include Sheriff Pujo, uh, are behind me, saw a need to ramp up counter narcotics efforts in Tulare County and dedicated resources to form this top notch drug task force, the Tulare, or the Tulare uh, Tactical Narcotics Team, or as we call it, TNT. And TNT, along with all the, the local and state and federal partners that you heard about today, by disrupting this organization and seizing the significant amount of drugs, by collaboratively working together, they have helped provide the necessary time and space needed for public health and prevention to do their vital work. I just want to provide a few statistics. So in 2023, just this last year, the Central Valley California HIDA's AOR, which stretches from Kern County all the way up to the Oregon border, we have 15 HIDA counties. The whole HIDA seized, uh, the task force has seized approximately 8,000 pounds of methamphetamine. You heard the sheriff, special agent in charge for DEA talk about today, 1,000 pounds were seized in this investigation alone. That is significant. Where fentanyl is now our number one drug threat in the CBC HIDA's area of responsibility, and really across all the HIDA regions in the United States, we can't forget the deadly effects of methamphetamine, which is our number two drug threat in this region. Just in 2022, which is the latest data uh, I have from the California um, Department of Public Health, 15 people per 100,000 residents in Tulare County in 2022 died from overdose relate, overdoses related to psychostimulants, which includes methamphetamine. So by TNT and all the law enforcement partners here, dismantling this significant drug trafficking cell, they have done a vital service to our communities, and I want to thank all the, all the people behind me and all the men and women that conducted that case. Thank you. Thank you, John. At this point, uh, Tulare Police Department Chief Fred Inklin. Good afternoon. <clears throat> I'm Fred Inklin, the Chief of Police for the Tulare Police Department. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to the DEA, DEA and the Sheriff's Department for allowing our agency to participate in this operation. I'd also like to thank all the personnel involved from the analysts to the team leaders and everybody in between. Uh, being in the operations center this morning is unlike, unlike anything I've ever seen in my career. Well done. Uh, the hours that were put into this operation were worth every minute. Each detail ensures successful prosecutions and safer streets. I want to emphasize to the citizens of my community that Tulare is safer because of this investigation. Please understand the majority of the residents that searched during this operation were in the city Tulare limits. And I can say with a high degree of certainty that these individuals who are arrested today are no strangers to the Tulare Police Department. I would consider them career criminals. And I know wholeheartedly that our federal prosecutors will try them to the best of their ability. I'd like to conclude by saying that the Tulare Police Department will never hesitate to work along, alongside our law enforcement partners to ensure a safer community. Thank you.
So as you heard, HIDA stands for High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area. We formed the TNT, uh, HIDA, right here in Tulare County. We have many agencies that are involved in that. Visalia Police Department, Porterville Police Department, Kings County Sheriff's Office, um, all here representing here today. Chief Jake Costello, Assistant Sheriff Bradford uh, is here. Uh, we have uh, Captain Luma Fahum representing Chief Zalazar with the Visalia Police Department. We're very thankful for uh, the Tulare Police Department as well as our DEA U.S. Attorney's Office and Homeland Security, who of which we have you speak. So at this point, I'd like to introduce uh, Michael Chapa of the Homeland Security uh, Investigations uh, HSI. Thanks, Sheriff. <clears throat> I'll be quick. Uh, like the Sheriff said, my name is Michael Chapas. I'm the Assistant Special Agent in Charge with Homeland Security Investigations, also known as HSI, right here in the Central Valley of California. Though HSI's involvement in this investigation was limited, HSI was contacted by the Tulare County Sheriff's Office asking for additional resources and assets needed for this enforcement action today. We did so by the deployment of a command center, staffing it with criminal analysts. In terms of public safety, the Central Valley law enforcement community will continue to collaborate and HSI will still continue to work with Tulare County to pursue these investigations against criminal organizations. Thank you. He was next in line and I missed it, so I apologize. That's okay. <laughs> so we do want to thank everyone uh, here today. So as the sheriff of Tulare County, I have to say this. I read you the cases earlier because this is what law enforcement is having to do on an ongoing and continual basis. This case was huge. The other cases that I read before this case were huge. And we're going to continue seeing huge cases that are demanding upon resources of law enforcement that are impacting public safety all up and down the Central Valley, quite frankly, across this country. Deadly fentanyl coming into our country, which can be prevented. Thousands of pounds of methamphetamine coming into our country, which can be prevented. As you heard earlier, a small child exposed to fentanyl can be prevented. Our safety, because of an open and unsecure border, is important that the elected officials in position in California and Sacramento, as well as our federal levels, need to recognize that law enforcement is expending thousands of man hours investigating cartels. This case directly connected to the Sinaloa cartel. If that doesn't shock the senses, it should. I, as sheriff, cannot always come out and say what we're investigating. Cases are confidential. Had I whispered, even for a moment, that we had been in a nine-month investigation involving the Sinaloa cartel, it would have jeopardized the safety of the officers investigating, as well as potential victims. I am not soft on border. I believe in a strong and secure border. I believe that this administration and our state officials need to take a strong look at securing our border so that we can be safe within our country. Now, I can't always say it, but I'm saying it now. We need a strong and secure border, or we will continue seeing cases just like this one, where people's lives are in jeopardy, can't afford it any longer. I, as sheriff, quite frankly, am frustrated. I'm proud of the men and women. I'm proud of the people standing behind me who put their heart and soul into making our community safer. But it's time for America and the state of California to wake up because deadly fentanyl and drugs are coming across our border. Our children, lives are in jeopardy and the safety of this country is in jeopardy. But I am heartfelt in when I say that we have good, hardworking men and women in law enforcement that are doing a great job each and every day. But there will be another case like this and the one after that if we don't start taking things seriously in regards to our border. So with that, I will conclude, open it up to questions. If I don't have the answer to a question you asked, we have many well-educated and hard-working people here behind me that can help answer the questions that you may have. 
And if none, that's even better. So I sure appreciate everyone being here today. We hope that we've answered all of your questions. This is a phenomenal case, a great case. Drugs are taken off the street. Guns are taken off the street. The case is continuing even as we speak. We were in a briefing just before we came out here, and there was additional pounds of uh, methamphetamine, additional amounts of money being seized. So the case is not over. Uh, we anticipate further arrests in this case. And so uh, with that, to the men and women who I saw this morning and the men and women that I have seen over the last nine months putting this case together, congratulations. This is your work. This is your work. And you guys pulled this together. We are the leaders representing you, but you did this. Congratulations. Thank you for being here, and we appreciate you listening to our story. Hi, I'm Monty Torres with Fox 26 News on YouTube. Thank you for checking out our YouTube channel, where we have loads of great content for you to choose from. And while you're here, why not click on the subscribe button right here? That way you can stay in touch with all the latest breaking news, everything news related within the Central Valley. And thank you for watching.